Hi, I'm Kelsey Brennan-Wessels, and in today's special edition of Earth from Space, we are joined by ESA's Josef Aschbacher. Now, while this is not the first time he's been on our program, since the last time we spoke, he has been appointed Director of ESA's Earth Observation Programs. Josef, thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure being with you. Now, it's been about 100 days since uh, you've been appointed the Director of Earth Observation for ESA. Looking ahead to the end of the year, what are the main topics you plan to focus on? Uh, until the end of the year, the main topics or the main topic is uh, the preparation of the ministerial conference from our point of view, from the Earth Observation point of view. Uh, we're having a very um, nice package of Earth Observation proposals for the ministerial uh, conference, worth about 1.7 billion euros altogether. Uh, and I am working very hard with my colleagues and with the member states to reach very good subscription of this program. Okay, when you speak of proposals, can you give me an example of what kind of proposals you are? Uh, we are having five proposals. Uh, the biggest one is the Earth Observation Envelope Program, uh, which is the, the bread and butter program, as, as we call it, uh, which really is a science program, but also prepares all the operational missions of Copernicus and meteorology. Uh, so it really is the program that prepares science, technology and operational activities. And it has uh, uh, all the activities required from preparation of missions, technology development, uh, building of satellites, uh, the operation of satellites and the exploitation of, of the satellite data for every citizen and for everyone. Okay. Now looking beyond 2016, what are the main challenges for the Earth Observation Directorate? Uh, there are many challenges. Um, in fact, uh, one uh, activity I really would like to pursue is to look at the external challenges, uh, what happens in the world. Uh, for example, uh, there is a very strong uh, push from the commercial sector to enter Earth observation. <coughs> There's also um, a very, uh, for example, the uh, constellations of Earth observation satellites are coming up. Um, other elements are, for example, UAVs and high altitude platforms, uh, which might complement our satellite data. Other activities are big data. The ICT revolution, of course, uh, makes it possible that data can be accessed everywhere by everyone from an, any place in the world. So all these are really uh, activities that happen anyway, with or without ESA. So my, my challenge will be to look, what can ESA do? Uh, how can we position ourselves best in order to, to meet these challenges? And at the end of the day, how can we help our industry, our member states, to really be well prepared to meet some of these challenges? And what can ESA as a public uh, organization do to support the industry? Now, innovation is very important for ESA. Where do you see the potential for innovation within the Earth Observation Directorate? Innovation is at the core of ESA, it's also at the core of my directorate, and it's extremely important, uh, I fully agree. Um, we have innovation on several sectors, for example, uh, on the use of science data, uh, that we, where we really explore new ways of using data for new applications in agriculture, in forestry, in ocean monitoring and so on. Then, of course, the use of this data goes hand in hand with big data, so we are combining satellite data with all kinds of other information using big data analytics in, in order to really make use of the ICT revolution. And then on the technology side, uh, innovation is of course uh, at the core of our business. Uh, for example, we produce some of the world's best uh, and most advanced science satellites. ADM uh, is one of these examples which will be launched next year. Uh, ADM is a, a mission uh, which will measure wind uh, speed, direction, wind profiles in the atmosphere, in cloud-free atmospheres, which may be uh, quite unusual to, to imagine, because the, a laser from the satellite sent down into the atmosphere will be reflected on particles and this reflection can be used to retrieve wind profiles. And this is really uh, top technology which doesn't exist anywhere in the world. Now, what is the most exciting topic for you personally coming up in the next months or the next couple of years? Personally? Okay, first of all, uh, the ministerial conference needs to go well. And this is uh, where I'm putting most of the, en of the emphasis now in my directorate to really make sure that all the documents that are necessary to be prepared, all the interactions which we have with industry, with our member states, uh, with other partners, that this is going extremely well. In fact, I'm uh, in a very intense dialogue with our member states and I can say that uh, last month uh, in September we have been uh, approving with our member states all the legal documents necessary to go to the ministerial so we are not carrying problems to the ministerial so we really have uh, I would say a very good starting point of course to get the subscription organized. Um, 
the next um, highlight, uh, which we are already working on, uh, but next year will be uh, very much uh, an activity for us, is to prepare the next generation of uh, Copernicus satellites, so Sentinel satellites. Uh, today we have six uh, series of uh, Sentinels, uh, Sentinel 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Um, and together with the European Union and the European Commission, we are seeing how we can expand uh, this series uh, towards maybe a Sentinel-7, Sentinel-8, Sentinel-9 and so on. Uh, uh, the reason being that uh, when the first set of Sentinels has been defined about 10-15 years ago, uh, the policy priorities were of a certain type uh, and the Sentinels today are answering those policy priorities. Now we are getting new policy priorities, for example uh, the COP21 uh, Paris Agreement uh, is asking for global monitoring of carbon dioxide uh, from satellites or from ground. Uh, and there we want to establish, together with the European Commission, a system that allows to monitor carbon dioxide worldwide. Uh, and Europe again wants to be a leader in uh, establishing such a system. And this will be one of the highlights and uh, one of the very intense activities for next year. Well, Josef, thank you so much for joining us today. No, thank you very much. It was a pleasure. And to our viewers, remember that to learn more about space and about our planet, you can visit our website at www.esa.int.